Hello. Hello. And welcome. Welcome indeed. You join us on board our boat, We're on the Move. Indeed, I'm Mark. And I'm Julie. And this week we travel from Midgham uh, all the way to Marsh Benham. Yes. We do it in two stages. So the first half you would have seen last week. Yeah. This is the second half where we go uh, just through Newbury and then we land at Marsh Benham. So it's a short little trip, but hopefully lots of interesting things along the way. It's quite a few locks though, wasn't it? It was a few locks, yeah. Absolutely exhausted at the end of that. Yep, yeah, I was. Absolutely exhausted. Can we say a massive thank you to all of our subscribers, uh, both new and old, for joining us on the channel. It's great to have you along. Indeed. And can we also say a big thank you to all of our Patreons? Yes, indeed. Um, we've got two new ones, haven't we? We have, yes. We've got... Um, Anna Jerram. Anna Jerram, that's correct. And we've got Gary Reynolds. Yes. Uh, two R's, uh, not one. <laughs> so um, thank you very much to you two for um, your support it's much appreciated much much appreciated we've also got um, some donations in from a PayPal as well so we need to thank them yes um, the first one we need to thank is uh, James and Dominique yes uh, we'll put some pictures of the curry that we bought thank you very much indeed you two it was absolutely delicious they said we had to buy a curry yeah so they forced us to buy a curry we didn't even, we don't even like curry um you lie yeah but no it was absolutely delicious so we'll, we'll put some pictures of the curry just so you can see and can we also say thank you to alan richt yep yeah, alan hope, richt hope, hope i got the name right indeed and uh also can we say thank you to michael Adamiak. um i think that's how you pronounce your surname if it isn't let me know in the comments and i will obviously correct it yes thank um you. yes so thank you all for your support it is massively appreciated yeah can we say a big hello to steve and maria Hello, Steve and Maria. Yes, who passed us by with that great big, what do you call it? Uh, loud hailer, like a foghorn thing, yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure that they woke us up. <laughs> yeah, although oh, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and we were awake. Yeah, we were awake. Yeah, we were so awake. So hi to you. Mm. Boom, here we go. <laughs> Look, he's in there working away. <laughs> hi, guys. Hiya. How are you doing? Not bad, thanks. How are you? Good, not too bad at all. We were just coming, coming past. I thought I would uh, slow down and say goodbye for Christmas. Have a good trip. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. And you. I love you the too. tunnel. <laughs> See you later. So we've got a couple of decisions. There are winter stoppages happening on the Kennet and Navan Canal. And in front of us, as we are at the moment about eight miles of stoppages yes yeah which it's, is quite a big area it stretches all the way from great bedwin uh, up to a place called wooden rivers which is about eight and a half miles yeah and it's about nine locks ten More locks than that. 12 locks quite a few yeah, lots of locks so we've got to decide whether we stay this side yeah of the stoppage where there's a river section yeah and only a couple of miles to cruise up and down on but less boats but less boats or we go up into the long pound yeah which is that's what they call it the long pounds 15 miles of no locks yeah but it is crammed but it does suit our advantage to go that way because eventually we want to be traveling towards bristol and they're closing the cane hill flight so if we stick this side it means we've got the stoppages and then the cane hill flight stoppages which means we won't be able to go that way until march next year whereas if we go into the long pound we can travel through the long pound to get to the flight in time for january beginning of january to go down the flight so that we can beat all of the stoppages and actually start to make some progress the other worrying thing as well is, is that if we're stuck in a five mile stretch these videos are going to get even more boring than they normally are so we've got a big decision to make we either stay this side which is probably easier for family and friends yeah and quieter in case we go down into another uk lockdown or we do uh the other thing which is we say sod the family and we please you lot <laughs> um, so that we can make lots of lovely videos 
with lots of cruising, loads <laughs> more cruising than you can shake a stick at. Well, so let us know in more. the comments. Let us know in the comments down below whether you think we should go towards the Cane Hill flight and into the Long Pound, or whether we should stick where we are. Yeah, let us know. So uh, we had a bit of a soggy start to the week, <laughs> to say the least. It all started with a pair of soggy knickers. <laughs> Wet through they were, wet through, <laughs> and um, I'm not even going to explain that. <laughs> no. I'm not even going to explain it. I'm just going to leave it no. there. So anyway, having been alerted to this major catastrophe through the wet knickers uh, of a water leak, of a water leak, and uh, we had a leaking pump, and it's a freshwater pump situated in the bedroom in the cupboard. Um, we've had problems with it for the last year. It's been going off intermittently. We've had a leaking yeah. tap and the tap leak has got worse. So every time the tap leaks, maybe once every two, three seconds, of course it depressurizes the pump because it draws water out of the pump without the pump being switched on. And therefore the pump then has to then repressurize. So it runs for longer and longer. And what we think's happened is, is that it's just run for so long that it's either burnt itself out or it's broken something inside getting very technical here but we had a leak yeah we had a leak it was enough to make the carpet wet and to make uh julie's knickers wet <laughs> i'm just gonna leave that there i'm gonna keep saying that actually no you're not i am it's not coming no. out it's staying in it's not so this is what the old pump looks like and for boaters, you'll recognize this it's a jabsco um this is a 25 psi you can get a 40 psi so me being the technically minded person that I am, I immediately screamed like a baby and went, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And then I suddenly realized, come on, Mark, just just get a, get a grip and let's deal with this properly. So, so we had two problems. We have a tap that needs replacing and we had a pump that needs replacing. So immediately I got a pump from a local chandlery. Mm. Uh, that was 72 pounds, which was better than it was on Amazon. Yeah, it was. Um, saved me about eight quid. Um, so that was fitted, that was easy, that was like for like. I was gonna film it, but I decided against it in the end because it was such a cramped space. Essentially, all you would have seen would have been my ass and my head in the cupboard. Sorry, what did you say? No, I was saying, I was agreeing. So, and a lot of grunting and groaning. So it would have been akin to watching, I don't know, a man with his head in the cupboard taking a massive poo, <laughs> which wouldn't be that interesting to watch, or it might be, I don't know. <laughs> so I couldn't really film it, but um, suffice to say, the pump swap was easy. That was a case of out with the old, in with the new. And then it was a case of fitting the new tap. So this week we've had a new pump fitted and a new mixer tap fitted. So we hopefully have solved the problem. Fingers crossed. Well, we haven't sunk yet. So we hope you enjoy the footage that you're about to see. And uh, if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. Um, and once you do, uh, don't forget to click the bell icon because that then gives you notifications of when we post future videos. And obviously, Julie, we like to hear... All your comments. All of your comments. So, without further ado... Oh, hold on. Put my glasses up. They were down the end of the nose like Dr. Snuggle. <laughs> you look like Dr. <laughs> Dr. Snuggle. I'm knitting like this, I'm like... <laughs> Let's do that again. I look more like Michael Caine now. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Hit it. Right. I can't remember what I was saying. So without further ado. So without further ado, let's watch the video. Let's watch the video. So this is the narrow section. I'm just going to go and set the lock and let Mark go through. So this is the West Mills area of Newbury and I'm just going to wait for Mark to come up the lock and then we can go through the road bridge. So we'll just wait for this boat to come through and then it'll be our turn. Do 
just the other side of the road swing bridge there's a lovely stretch of permanent moorings on the off side they've got gardens they've got allotments they're absolutely fantastic and I think if we were to take a permanent mooring something like that would be ideal but yeah so this stretch just on the other side of the bridge is fantastic and very very pretty We're now uh, the other side of Newbury, heading towards our next lock. We've got this one and two more. And then I think the fourth lock is going to be Marsh Benham. And that might be our destination for today. It's about two locks shy, maybe three locks shy of Kintbury. But uh, the hour is pressing, my knees are aching, my ears are old and my nose is bent and grizzled. So we now have three more locks to go till we get to Marsh Benham. The sun is getting quite low though, right in front of us. So uh, how long we'll be able to see for, I don't know. But let's, fingers crossed, we will get to Marsh Benham. That looks like the remains of an old railway bridge. So in theory, the lock landing for this one should be on the left hand side because that's where the towpath is. I um, can't actually see it at the moment. Got to be on the left. So this is lock number, I haven't got a clue. Helpful this vlog isn't it? Lock number 84 apparently, I've just been informed by my lovely wife. more locks to go. Well I think it's safe to say that uh, these are reeds but they're no loo reed but this is definitely a walk on the wild side. Did you see what I did there? Behind me is the A34, which uh, we've travelled up many, many times. Um, it's probably one of the most boring roads in the country. It's long, it's straight, it's dull to be honest, but it is the A34. This is where we walked down with Marisa, wasn't it? I think we've got the weird to go by then, haven't we? This is our second to last lock of the day and we are going to stop at a place called Marsh Benham. I think we've mentioned that before. Uh, didn't quite make it to Kintbury, which is a bit of a shame. We have another th four locks to get to Kintbury and the hour is growing late. Um, and we've got to walk back and get the car as well. So that's just going to be um, a walk too far. So uh, I think it's in one more lock and then we're going to moor in uh, Marsh Benham. We've moored there before. It's absolutely beautiful. There's somewhere to park the car and also there's a cracking pub called The Red House that do the best haddock and chips. 
but um, it's a lovely place there's loads of walks loads of places where you can go and just relax and it's only a few miles outside Kimbury so next stop obviously after that will be Kimbury I have to report that uh, I said I needed beer come hook or by crook and unfortunately I'm out of luck I think because we're not going to walk back and get the car tonight which means I don't have any beer in the fridge and quite often when we do big moves like this this has been a, what, an eight mile hop with 11 locks and three swing bridges so not big in miles but big in amount of physical work to do um, I like to reward myself with a nice cold beer and uh, unfortunately that's not going to happen gutted I am gutted well looks like I got that wrong that wasn't the last lock of the day that was the second to last lock of the day although my goodness me that one took a long time we got to the lock and there was a cruiser like a Thames cruiser and we thought what on earth are they doing they all stood around just chatting and it looked to us like the lock was full and it wasn't and it was taking about 20 minutes to fill the last maybe half a foot maybe yeah a couple of inches and uh, it took four of us on one gate just to get it open it was leaking that badly so of course when we went in it was the same thing it took forever to fill so that whole lock waiting for a boat to go in and come down and us to go in and go up took about an hour but uh, I think we're on the final stretch now so we're on our way to Marsh Benham see you when we get there final lock of the day final lock of the day it's at Marsh Benham, final lock of the day. And there's Julie. My God, has she moaned. She's done a couple of locks, a couple of locks. She wants to see the rope burns on my hands or I've had to hold the rope at lock landings. Honestly. She's making hard work of these making hard work of these she said she's knackered i think i believe her you boaters that watch the channel you'll know um, that if you don't moor up by a certain time of the day so let's just say for argument's sake you're still traveling and it's sort of six ish six thirty seven o'clock the chances of you getting a decent mooring diminish quite significantly the later in the day it is because most people naturally by three, four, five o'clock have moored up. So all the best mooring spots have gone. We've just arrived in Marsh Benham. It's now six o'clock. We've been going since 8.40, 8.30ish this morning. We had a half hour stop at uh, Newbury Marina to fill up with water uh, and um, eat a sandwich. But Julie's just wandered down to see whether there's any decent moorings at Marsh Benham. Hopefully, fingers crossed there are because as I say it's six o'clock and uh, I'm getting hungry. I've promised her a slap up feed this evening, which in Mark speak is beige food. I'm very good at beige food. So I'm gonna do her bacon, eggs, sausage, uh, mushrooms, fried tomatoes. I'm gonna do her a fry up, um, one of my specialities. I don't have many cooking specialities, but a fry up, but it's so she can put her feet up because she's worked blooming hard today. She's done 11 locks, three swing bridges, and um, yeah, she's and she's walked an awful long way. She's walked a lot of the way because the locks are about a mile apart. So in fairness to her, she can get in, have a shower, put her feet up, and I will pour her a whiskey and lemonade, and she can relax while I cook her beige food evenings don't get much better than that.